Good afternoon, lovely people. How are you all today? I hope you're well. <sighs> Finally, the rain has stopped. Not only has it stopped, the sun's trying to come out. It's gorgeous. There's even a bit of warmth in the air. I've, I've turned up in layers and layers. Just had a little quick walk around the garden to think about what needs doing. I kind of know what I want to do today. Um, and I've had to take my layers off. Yay! Don't know how long it's going to last. We do a load more rain tomorrow. And I think it's going to start possibly this afternoon. But my goodness me. I don't know about the rest of the world, but... I don't even know about the rest of the country, but down here in London, we have had so much rain in the last few days. <clears throat> and I think I was mentioning that, <coughs> sorry, mentioning it the other day. It's not about quantity in terms of millilitres, but it's just been constant. So I haven't been in the garden for a week. This time last week, I cracked on with a few jobs and I was feeling, yeah, brilliant. Can't wait to get stuck into everything else. There was a lot to do, there's a lot to do, but I wasn't feeling, I wasn't feeling daunted. Oh, cheerio, Rusty. I wasn't feeling daunted by it because I'd got my plan, had plenty of time. <laughs> Here we are one week later, haven't done any of it. So I am feeling a bit behind. You know, there's things like the broad beans and garlic to go in. I think that will wait a couple of days because I need to clear some space in the next, well, today. Um, but never mind. Today, oh, I'm so excited. It's pretty much my favourite harvest of the year, I think. Is it my favourite? <gasps> They're all my favourite, but this is my super, super favourite. Today, I'm going to harvest the squash. <laughs> Um, now, I've been banging on about this for the last probably six or eight weeks or so. It seems to have been a really rubbish squash year for so many people, and not just in the UK. You guys have let me know via comments on YouTube and on my Facebook page that you've had a rubbish year too. There's always the exception to the rule, and there are some people with massive harvests, but it seems that the general rule this year is they haven't been great and particularly bad seem to be Waltham butternuts, which I know a lot of us have grown this year. Well, we've grown them <laughs> in terms of we've grown the plants, but not much by way of fruit. So last year I had 52 squash to harvest, which was amazing. I'm not going to have anywhere near that much this year. What did I uh, What did I say last week? 26? Come on, get your wellies on. Let's get harvesting and counting them up. Oh my goodness, I can't begin to tell you how good it feels to be back out here again. <sighs> Just a few days I've missed it so much. Right then, let's get snipping and seeing what we've got. And let me give you a quick close up of the first, woo, first bottom up. Yay! <sighs> wow, that has been, it feels like that's been so hard earned this year. The first wolf moth. I think this is one of the bigger ones. I don't mind them coming up a bit small actually because, <clears throat> you know, this sort of size cut in half, scooped out, roasted in the oven. That's a really nice meal. If I use the whole of it, that'll be probably about six portions of soup. So yeah, I don't mind them being a bit small. I would have preferred more quantity. We'll come to the quantity when we get to the end. Now in terms of harvesting them, just be really careful with the stem. The, the skin of the pumpkin is its wrapper packaging for the next year or so. If you try and dig your thumbnail in, it shouldn't, it shouldn't go into the flesh. That tells us that skin has begun to cure, it's beginning to harden up and it will serve as a great bit of packaging. At the top here where the stem joins, that's its real weak point. 
if I was to knock this bit of stem off, it leaves a really soft bit of flesh exposed there and it can rot from there. So be generous when you're cutting off your bit of stalk. I'm just going to snip that bit off and that because where I've got them sticking out at the side, that's just asking them for, to catch on others and get this whole thing knocked off. But yay, one down. I've no idea how many more to go, so let's, let's go on the hunt. So, a lovely couple of carnival here. Again, just being careful as I lift them, there's quite a lot of foliage that's died back, a lot of this sort of stemmy material. As I lift them, I don't want to snag the stalk as I lift them. Now what's interesting, slash crazy, hold on, let's pop those there a second. Oh, everything is so muddy and damp today. There's <laughs> actually a worm on the bottom of this one. I will give them all a good clean before I take them home to store. Now, this is, oopla, believe it or not, This is supposedly the same seed as this. <laughs> They're obviously not the same. <laughs> Spot the difference. Or, oh, I wonder if this is one of the spare cream of the crops that I used. Let's have another comparison. I had, I originally planted eight wolf and butternuts, two of which were utterly, utterly mashed by the slugs and snails. So I plugged, ah, you see I'm remembering now, I plugged those two gaps with one carnival and one cream of the crop. So I'm wondering, because they've both got quite a pointy end, I'm wondering if that's a cream of the crop. But again, look at the difference. Now, the thing with quite a few of them, Let's take the carnival, for example. When I harvested last year, most of them were still quite green, but within a few months of being at home, they did ripen and go orange. So I'm thinking that the same will happen to them. Right, I'm going on a squash hunt. <laughs> I can't remember all the lines from um, going on a bear hunt, but can't go under it, can't go over it. Let's just go through the squash patch. Yay! <laughs> oh, these are really tiny. But actually, you know what? For, oh, scritchy, scratchy nose. For a supper for one, they're gorgeous. Yeah. Oh. Teeny tiny butternut. What I'll do is once I've got them all gathered, oh, the snippers don't like working on soggy stones. Once I've got them all gathered, I'll show you. Oh, what I should have said, oh, sorry. In terms of knowing when to pick and ripeness, obviously one of the reasons I'm picking them now is because we are due to get a bit cold. But with the stalk, so as I was showing you with the indent with the thumbnail on the flesh, with the stalk, it starts to get kind of woody. Some people describe it as being corky. I'd say woody, woody, corky, doesn't matter. But they do toughen up considerably and feel sort of dry and hard. That's perfect for picking. However, having said that, oh, it's, do you know what? I've got little fine hairs tickling my face. If you are harvesting now because of the weather and some are coming off and the stalks are still sort of green and soft, you can still harvest, but just be extra careful. Oh, excuse my backside a sec. Um, yeah, just be extra careful how you, um, how you handle them because that soft stalk is going to be easier to knock off. Oh, it's so exciting and I'm 
getting warm. How wonderful that the sun came out. Um, there we go. Yeah, fabulous. Where next? Oh, I think I have to go down the next row. Bear with me. Oh, little baby ones. That is bed number one done. That's it from eight plants. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen 11, 12, 13 squash from eight plants. That is not good enough. Okay, never mind. Let's get into the cathedral bed. Oh, the light today is so beautiful. It just feels even more beautiful after all these horrid wet days we've had. Okay, so this is the Sucrine du Berry. This is the one that has the ever so slight hint of nutmeg taste to it. Someone was asking me about having some seeds from me of these. Oh, I don't want to take snails home. About Yeah, about having some seeds. The problem with squash is they massively cross-pollinate so yes I could save some seeds from these but almost certainly Sucreen is not what I would get next year right let's have um, let's have a go at this one violina that I have one violina from two plants and it's a tiddler I did have another one developing, but it rotted off, so I think, oh, sunlight's bright, isn't it? I think there was a pollination issue. Again, a little tiddler. But that's a couple of meals if I have it roasted, or four to six meals if I have it as soup. You know, is there anything, is there any sight which says autumn? More. No than the harvest of the squash. Oh, absolutely beautiful. If you notice as I'm picking them up, as tempting as it is to pick them up by their stalks, I don't, <laughs> because I do not want to knock them off. But yes, this is definitely, definitely one of the most perfect parts of autumn gathering the squash in all their beautiful shapes and colours and textures and oh, honestly it fills me with so much joy every year. Okay well I'm going to get the next row out and then let's reconvene back at the shed so we can have a little sort out and look at how dismal this year's harvest is or actually I don't think it's going to be that dismal just not as good as last year. Come on let's get picking. walking down the path with a wheelbarrow full of squash shot <laughs> and uh, I think there's a bit of rusty then too to add to the oranginess. <sighs> Do you know what? All things considered, I haven't counted yet, I'm pretty happy. <laughs> what a happy sight. Oh my goodness. So I've counted them. I've got 34. They're all on the small side this year compared with last. But as I was just saying, that's fine because, you know, if I'm making a soup from one of them, I'll still get four to six portions, depending on what else I put with it. There's plenty where I can just slice in half, stuff it and roast it. Or I should just say, I don't know if you've seen my kale, rice and nuts pie video, but that mix is a beautiful, gorgeous stuffing in any squash too. So I'm sure I should be doing lots of that. And the lovely thing about making up that kale, rice and nuts mix is 
I make enough, well, I make enough for two pies, but do one pie, and then if I've got leftover pastry, make them into little pasties. But generally, I've had it on its own, cold as a salad, that works. But mostly, I set some aside to stuff the squash with, so yes. I am happy, I'm really, really happy with this harvest, because honestly, I didn't think I was going to get anywhere near this amount. I was having visions of, I don't know, 12 to last a year. So it's not quite one a week. Although I still do have 10 left at home, 34, 44, it's still not quite one a week, but it's a good feed. And because I would say over half of them have been grown in the cathedral bed, you know, vertically and in the little spaces underneath, I've not taken up up too much growing space to get a really really good amount of food <sighs> happy days it's kind of like groundhog day isn't it <laughs> i think this is going to become one of my annual must-have photographs me outside the shed with my pumpkin squash harvest on the table i'm kind of there's two i'm missing this year in terms of how they look at harvest one is the beautiful, large, bright orange Rouge Vif de Tombe. That's the Cinderella, the classic Cinderella pumpkin. And the other one, of course, is the Galeur Dessine, which is the kind of the warty one. I've got a couple of seeds for each, so I may, I may bung them in somewhere next year. I didn't, I purposely didn't grow any this year though, because they come up so big. The minute I cut into one to make some soup or whatever, I've then got the whole of the rest of that squash slash pumpkin to deal with, which invariably means getting it chopped up and getting it in the freezer. And I'm particularly glad I didn't do that this year because my freezers are all chock-a-block full already. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm delighted. I, as I said, earlier i know it's been a really tough squash year for most of us but i hope i hope you're finding some hidden ones amongst that foliage still and i hope you're going to have enough to enjoy over this winter right i could just sit here and look at them all afternoon but i mustn't i've got lots of jobs to do and the next one is to prepare a bed for sowing the broad beans right then <laughs> Time to get the pepper and cucumber bed cleared. Oh, this is always, hang on a sec, noisy, noisy. It's another of those, I just love it, exciting times in the garden. I'm probably a bit giddy, obviously, from the squash harvest, but this also, oh, this also brings out the aeroplanes. This also makes me giddy because I'm getting ready to plant again. Yay! <laughs> and every, every single time we sow some seeds in the garden, we're sowing a bit of the future, we're sowing a bit of optimism and hope and faith and all those things. So, yeah, every time I sow anything, it should be a moment for celebration. Right, out come all the watering pots and the snails that are hiding in them. The peppers in the front, I harvested the last of them, gosh, yeah, it was about a week, 10 days ago. It was before all the rain came. Uh, so they're all now safely tucked up in the freezer and some of them in my belly, of course, obviously. And what I will do with them today is uh, they're just going to get chopped for the compost. Now I was talking the other day about crop and drop in order to plant through. <clears throat> but because I'm seeding this bed rather than planting in it, I am going to take them out. I think they'll probably end up in the end of the chickpea bed because that still needs a bit of material for the winter. And then I can get a bit of chicken poo on here, get it raked, get it ready. 
Yay! Now it's sod's law, isn't it, that I'm doing this after all this rain because ideally with this black membrane, it's like a fabric. I'd like to leave it out in the sun to dry before packing it away. It is quite sunny and warm today, so I think what I'll do is I'll hang it over my fence so it can flap in the breeze a bit and hopefully dry out a bit. But then probably, rather than folding it up and tucking it in my little, you know, my little lift up bit in the shed where I showed you where my fleeces got destroyed, I'll probably pop it into the cold frame for now instead. Right, let's get chopping. And I must say, I am so grateful for the fact that I now am my own boss and that I work from home because it does mean that I can make the most of these dry days. I, you know, it breaks my heart for other people that I know can only get to their garden at the weekend and I see a whole weekend of rain forecast. You know, I've been frustrated by not being here for a week. But imagine if you had two or three weekends on the trot that were rainy. Ah, oh, yeah, so I do, whoops, hurt snap. They were old sticks anyway. So I do completely and utterly sympathize with folk who, who can't flex their time in the same way that I can. If you can flex your time, then huh, you've got no excuses, have you? <laughs> get down to your allotment, get into your garden, whatever it is. If there's one dry day that week, get out there and get stuck in. There's no use, sort of two or three weeks down the line, bleating on about how you've not had a chance to be in the garden when we've got days like today and you're free. <laughs> so, okay, all the little sticks out, you could hear them snapping, they're pretty rubbish, but they do just for a bit of support at the beginning of the season, once as, should I say, as the plants are getting established. Oh, in terms of the experiment, I did the experiment of nipping out their tops to see if I could get them to bifurcate. They did bifurcate, but then I think I did it far, far too late because they, they just didn't have a chance to grow. So you can see I've got a nice big bushy plant and I think I had one, um, one pepper from this. So it's a good lesson for me to learn. Next year, next year, next year, next year, um, get them nipped out, pinched out much earlier, probably when they're only maybe six true leaves, basically at the stage when they're still at home. Um, what I might do next year in terms of that is, is maybe do half of them like that. Or no, I'm a bit scared. I'll do a third like that. Fortunately, I had so many plants this year because everything germinated. Um, I, I wasn't worried about trying it with a couple of them. So yeah, definitely give that a go next year. Probably so more than I need. So that hopefully again with good germination, I'll have more little seedlings than I need so that I can do a bit of experimenting. And then of course I should pass that information on to you. See, this is why I give them the stake they don't have the biggest root system you know there's only a sort of like a couple of inches there <clears throat> it's a really good idea at this time in the year as you're pulling plants out have a look at the root system because it gives you so much information in terms of <clears throat> is this plant going to need a bit of help when you first put it in in terms of a bit of a staking is there enough root to stop it sort of rocking around I mean, even with a bit of staking, mine have rocked around a little bit because they get top heavy. If you think of this full of fruit as well, and it's all balancing on this little root system. Also having a look at the roots, it will give you ideas about watering. So if you know how deeper plants roots go, 
in the height of summer when we're really really dry get your trowel your dibber your finger whatever it is down into the soil if it's moist six inches down great great for things like the root or the the tapering the tap root crops like our parsnips and carrots they can go and find that water the tomato plants will go down and find it but then when you've got something with such a shallow root system like the peppers onions most of the salad leaf type things you might think to yourself okay there is moisture down there but it's quite a ways from the roots of course there is a theory that if you don't water the, the, the roots have to go and find the water um, you decide <laughs> if you want to experiment with your plants by not watering feel free but because I live on all this food um, I'm not going to experiment when it comes to watering I water less these days or put it this way I watered less this year than I have in previous years I'm not counting last year because that was a drought but I definitely watered less this year because apart from this bed every other bed in the garden was really quite heavily mulched so it it did a great job of just protecting the soil and and helping to stop quite too much evaporation from happening okay get chopping Vivi bit of chicken manure pellets. Jobs are good. Just very lightly rake them in. So I'm not, I'm not going to dig this bed at all. It was really compact at the beginning of the season where it had the brassicas in all winter. Um, I had mulched it a bit, but obviously over the course of the season the mulch sort of went in a bit and the, the soil was exposed. It was really quite compact, but I'm going to just see if my broad beans will happily grow in this without me doing any digging. So we've got rain tomorrow, I'm going to leave it exposed just for tomorrow. Oh, actually no, I'm going to put nets on because of the foxes. <clears throat> if I dare, if I dare leave this as it is, oh, the foxes will be in there two minutes, in two minutes. I've nicked these um, nets from the purple sprouting broccoli, which as I showed you on the um, September, October tour video, they were trying to push it off well what's slightly crazy is they had actually grown so big they pushed the uh, the little metal stick bits right out of the soil so we've got rain tomorrow that's great it will help to dissolve the chicken manure I can leave it a couple of days and then get back here to do some sewing. Woohoo! Oh, what a splendid afternoon yet again. So quiet. The birds, the kitty cuddles. <laughs> he's, still, he's still in this super duper affectionate mood. Oh, buddy, you are gorgeous. You know, it's just gorgeous to be back out in the garden again. I never realise quite how much I miss it until I come back. I mean I, oh hello, <laughs> are you not getting enough attention buddy? Um, yeah I mean when I'm not here of course I miss it and I know that I miss it but then when I get here I think oh my goodness I can't live without this, it's amazing. And the other day when I was <laughs> wittering on in the capers video um, about how normally by now the kind of the, the black mood of winter depression would have descended um, 
it was just it was just beginning but <laughs> but today oh any kind of hint of that has has just has just disappeared so if you're like me and you get a bit low and a bit blue when you're stuck indoors and it's getting darker and colder grab your opportunity on a day like today when it's dry and mild to get out there and recharge your soul as it were okay well there's loads more to do but i'll do it in a separate video that's enough for one video um it's another harvest in the next video oh rossi no don't jump there's no space no don't <laughs> everybody freeze i think it's time for me to go and rescue a cat so for now i'll say cheerio <laughs> it's come out the corner of my eye oh you pickle aren't you um yeah i'm gonna go and rescue rusty so cheerio for now look after yourselves and i'll see you all again really soon <laughs> bye <laughs>